I want to, uh, to introduce some concepts today and uh, show you how to move from open access to an open data to open science and uh, uh, describe the knowledge of workflow and the opportunities for uh, Ethiopia, uh, especially the NADRE uh, project. So, um, some data concerning internet. In June last year, uh, the majority of the world population is on internet, and then we have a 2,500% increase in the last 20 years of people able to access the internet. And uh, still last year, uh, we crossed the threshold of 1 billion servers over the internet. And the data, the data size on the internet is increasing exponentially. Uh, we are in the order of uh, uh, petabytes of data per month. Petabytes is uh, one, billion, one million billion uh, 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 bytes. And the data growth worldwide is also tremendously increasing. We are here in the order of zettabytes. Zettabytes are 10 to the 21 uh, bytes, a huge number which is still increasing. Storage requirements grow 20-40% uh, per year and information doubles every 18-24 uh, months. And this is going to become even bigger with the, with the uh, onset of the so-called Internet of Things. Uh, 50 billion, uh, between 30 and 50 billion uh, devices are supposed to be connected to the Internet in the, uh, by 2020, the next years. Uh, concerning data growth in science, I want to show you some examples. So the first comes from my own disciplines, high energy physics. Uh, the most important worldwide producer of data is the Large Hadron Collider, the, one of the, bi the biggest accelerator in the world for high energy physics. It's located at CERN in Geneva, in Switzerland, across the Swiss and the uh, French border. And so there are four big experiments that are taking data there. Data are taken by uh, hundreds of millions of small detectors and data are distributed worldwide on a tiered hierarchy. So the data are taken at CERN, then spread in tier one centers. There is one tier one per country, uh, 11 or 12 tier ones for the, for the, for the experiments I'm involved in, uh, the ALICE experiment, and then to tier two. So there are tens of uh, uh, big data centers in, uh, in the institutions participating to these experiments taking data. And data are, are spread worldwide because uh, uh, analysis of this data are done by researchers uh, spread around the 24 time zones. So they access this uh, amount of data. How much? Uh, so far, 500 petabytes of data, half of exabyte of an exabyte of data, which, uh, and the, the, what, the, I mean, what's really um, amazing is not the total number, but the rate. Uh, for the, the equivalent of uh, 14 million pictures a second stored on data and spread around the world. That's another example of scientific data growth. This comes from bioinformat bioinformatics, and this is the global growth of DNA sequencing per year. So this is the increase so far, and these are the estimations, uh, doubling every one, one, one year and a half, doubling every year, or doubling every seven months. We are basically here in the moment, and so you can see that uh, from the most pessimistic to the most pessimistic, we are still in the order of hundreds of exabytes to zettabytes of data. <coughs> Healthcare, this is data from one hospital only, and you see three petabytes of uh, medical imaging. Medical imaging in healthcare is becoming the most important uh, 
component of data production in hospitals and health uh, uh, institutions. And the estimations for 2020 are in the order of 35 zettabytes of medical imaging. Uh, uh, 44, uh, 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 44 in, uh, uh, times increase in the next 10 years. Last but not least, cultural heritage. Uh, 3D scannings and uh, uh, huge uh, initiatives are creating 3D models of uh, lots of cultural heritage around the world. This is uh, one example from Africa. The Zamani project is a huge initiative trying to uh, 3D scan a lot of uh, uh, monuments and cultural heritage across the continent. But now a 3D scanning, a 3D scanners are becoming portable and even smartphones can be turned into 3D scanners. So uh, cultural heritage is uh, actually becoming a killer application in, uh, in, big in, uh, in the so-called big data. Uh, when we talk about uh, science, we usually talk about the scientific method. All scientists since four centuries apply the same iterat iterative method to do research. They start from the analysis of the, of the, of the nature, they, they construct hypotheses, and then they, they build experiments, they acquire data, they analyze data, and they uh, write publications, and so on and so forth. And uh, data are an essential part of the scientific method. Science relies on creation, analysis, understanding of data, and, share, and sharing of data. But uh, the output of the scientific method is publications. So, in, uh, in the last, uh, since the first, two, the first pub scientific publication in the 17th century, most of the science is shared through publications. But uh, the pillars of the scientific method are repeatability of uh, the results of an experiment and reproducibility of the results of an experiment. So people started work, uh, wondering if science is reproducible. If starting from a paper, other people are able to reproduce the scientific conclusions included in the paper. And they discovered that th this is not the case in many, 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 many cases. So there is a, 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 this is a survey which has been conducted by Nature. Nature is a, a, a very important publication in the world, uh, 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 publisher in the world, and uh, they run a survey across 1,600, almost 1,600 researchers, asking for the uh, possibility and the pr and the problem of reproduce uh, scientific uh, conclusions, scientific results in their area, and the majority say yes. There is a significant crisis in reproducing that. And this is across many disciplines. So it's not related to one discipline only, but this is the same for many disciplines. <coughs> and what's important is in, in, in insufficient oversight, methods and code is unavailable, and raw data is not available. That's the problem. You have the publications, but in, in uh, basically all the cases, you don't have the data to reproduce the scientific results. So even if you go open access, you can share your publications, you can share your conclusions, but other people cannot profit of your research work because data is not available. And technical expertise required for reproduction of data, reproduction of data is not available. So reproducibility and, reuse and, uh, replica uh, the, and reproducibility are very important. But uh, what really matters is reusability of data. The reason why you want to share your publication and you share your data is that other people can use, can reuse the data to advance in the scientific endeavor. Or you can reuse other researchers' data to build more inter multidisciplinary approach to societal challenges. So open science, 
is deemed to be the right paradigm, scientific paradigm, to reach this uh, full reproducibility and reusability of data. Uh, there is, uh, open science is a recipe rather than a definition. There is no unique definition of open science. Open mm -hmm. science is, a, is, a, is an attitude. Where it involves practices such as promoting open access to research publication, open availability of research data, harnessing open source software and open standards. So openness is one of the most important things, but opening not only publications, so not only open access to publications, but open access to other, to all the other aspects of uh, uh, pro uh, production of scientific results, software, data, and even ent uh, entire virtual machines where data are reproduced by software, are analyzed by software. So uh, this is uh, a very well-known model of uh, uptake of new technologies. Uh, people uptake new technologies, they perceive usefulness, and uh, there is a behavioral intention to use this new knowledge. So uh, how we can move from the usual way of uh, doing science with publications to open science where you share all aspects. So you should open the whole research process. So the code, the publication, annotations, data, and all the aspects of the research work. And uh, you have uh, uh, policies, you have changes in the working policies to make, changes in the working culture, changes in the working methods, and developing services and infrastructures. And all the different stakeholders of science uh, benefit from this. Researchers, research teams, organizations, decision makers, the general public, and the country as a whole. So uh, if an open science uh, 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 attitude is, is, uh, is, uh, is actually realized in uh, research, uh, the, uh, all the country can, uh, can really benefit from the possibility to reuse, to reuse the data. There are several schools of thought of open science, and uh, I will mention in this, uh, in this presentation uh, the democratic school, where, where open access and open data and are, very, are, are the most important uh, aspects of uh, creating, realizing open science and so the infrastructure school where data repositories and grid and cloud computing are enablers of open science. So some aspects, so opening, uh, 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 open science is made of different aspects which are interrelated and uh, in this presentation we will talk about open data, open access, uh, uh, reference management, and uh, unique researcher IDs. So the possibility to unique tag um, research output, but also to have a unique reference to researchers across the world. So when we look at the um, open, at the usual open access uh, uh, diagram, uh, institution open access repositories <coughs> play a major role. So what is called green open access is very important. There is the gold open access with international journals, the green open access with institutional repositories is, is, uh, is, uh, is very important because their institutions can federate their data and provide other institutions in the country, uh, um, uh, private companies and uh, the, the uh, general public, the so-called uh, uh, citizen scientists with the possibility to access and reuse data. Open access advantages. This is a study. Uh, Archive is a very well known open access repository for um, uh, physics papers, but not only physics, I mean, science, science uh, uh, papers coming, uh, preprint coming from many uh, disciplines. And it's clear that the number of citations is higher in papers which have been published on open access journal as preprints 
than in usual journals. So there is a, an increase in the number of uh, 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 citations because uh, you, you share first and uh, other people are able to look at your data and to validate, to reuse, to reproduce your scientific results. But uh, usually lots of data are not available. This is the so-called data uh, pyramid. Uh, very few publications are put on the web with the data. Uh, now some publishers uh, require uh, authors to share data together with the, with, the, uh, with the paper. But this is rather new. The, la the, the vast majority of data which have been used for, to create publications are invisible, are completely hidden. So there is a problem of uh, 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 opening all the aspects of uh, uh, all, the, all the elements that uh, led to the, to the publications. And the fair data principle have been defined a few years ago. So one of the grand challenges of data intensive science is to, fa to facilitate knowledge discovery. And uh, by assisting humans and machines in their discovery, access, integration, and analysis of scientific data and their associated algorithms and workflow. So data should be fair. FAIR stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Not only data, all aspects of scientific research. So data is one of the aspects, publications is another aspect, software is another aspect, code is another aspect, and uh, I I infrastructure is also uh, to be shared. And you have here all the different uh, 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 principles of the, the FAIR data. F uh, FAIR means completely open data and completely closed data. So FAIR data is, a, is a, an evolution from private data, totally unfair, I would say, to uh, findable and usable, so at least uh, references to, to, the, to, to scientific outputs, uh, the possibility to share metadata and provenance to completely open access and open data. Open data should be functionally linked. So the step forward open data is linked open data. The possibility to link data coming from different disciplines to uh, tackle uh, uh, more complex problems. And one of the aspects to, to, to reach this functionally linked one of the enablers is the possibility to have uh, um, identifiers, persistent identifiers for data and publications. Uh, persistent identifiers attains to what is called the reference management. Uh, you may be used to uh, digital uh, identifier, to digital object identifiers or DOIs. So if you look at publications, you have noted since, since several years, publications have a code a uh, DOI that uh, uniquely reference that publication in the world. Well, the, what's uh, now uh, 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 suggested and recommended is to have DOIs for data as well, and for software, and for all aspects of scientific uh, outputs. So another concept came uh, the concept of uh, star data. So available data which are available on the web in whatever format with an open license are just, a, it's already a big process, a, a big progress, but is what is called one star data. Really what you want is to have data available and machine readable. Because uh, if you have to cope with petabytes of data, are not humans that search across data to, finalize, to analyze new results. These are machines. So data and publications and code should be machine readable, machine accessible. So no, uh, data should be uh, 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 published with non-proprietary formats, should be uh, linked, and 
they should be linked to provide context. So five stars data are actually linked open data where you can create that are semantically enriched. So semantic web is a set of standards to actually create linked data. So there are several standards. Uh, semantic web is a, is a set of uh, standards which are published and uh, recommended by the World Wide Web Consortium. So semantic web is part of the official web. So semantics, so, uh, just a few words on what semantic is. Semantics is a, is, a, is a correlation because a subject, an object, through a predicate. So, so for example, uh, here I can read it. Margaret Hatwood he is, he is a person. This is a statement. Or Margaret was born in Ottawa. These are very simple semantic connections. But then you can link the connections. So Margaret Atwood is a per, is a, is, was born in Ottawa, but on the other end, you can link Ottawa is a capital of Canada or as a population of, or is a birthplace of. So you can link concepts through semantics and you can really create a huge federation of data. How huge? This is the Linked Open Data Federation of DBpedia. DBpedia is the Linked Open Data, which is at the base of Wikipedia. So if you have uh, linked data, five stars linked data, the, data, the metadata can be en 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 enriched, and the knowledge can be searchable. And the knowledge can be discoverable and findable through the digital object identifiers. So data are becoming worth. Worth not only for science, but also for business, for economy, economic growth. So open data gets economic value. And actually, there is a report from the European Open Data Portal, which is uh, the, one of the largest linked open data services in Europe, about the economic, the economic value of open data. So there is an estimation that open data uh, have a, a market, a direct plus indirect market, of 325 billion euro. So they can create more than 100,000 jobs, and they can save 1.7 billion euros, uh, uh, mainly in uh, public administration and uh, e-government. So, there is a value chain, the public sector, research, universities, they create open data, they validate, they aggregate, they analyze, and they put the, the open data available. On the other end, the private sector can reuse it and create aggregated services that can have uh, economic value. Of course, this requires the creation of a number of skills. And this is another aspect of open data and open science, that is the needed skills to create data scientists and data stewards, people that can manage this open data and extract a new knowledge. Unfortunately, the open data attitude, the, the, the attitude to share data is, uh, is very, and even across the world. Uh, I, 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 will, I will show you two examples. One is the Open Data Barometer. This is a website publishing every two years the situation of open data across the world. And you can see uh, a complete, full open data is green, uh, closed open data is red, and then you can see the situation across the world in 2016. And the, the statistics, the new map for 2018 is going to be published very soon. And this is the Global Open Data Index. Again, uh, for Ethiopia, there, there is no information even. But there is no information even, I think, because uh, 
mo uh, many data are available, but uh, are are available, but are not shared. So, in the SciGaia project, I mean, we will mention several times SciGaia in the next presentations, which is a European, uh, European funded project that ran between 2015 and 2017. And many of the components of NADRE were actually inherited from SciGaia. Uh, in the open access platform, one, one, uh, one ingredient, one element is the open access repository. And so we will go across all this in the next two days. So I don't want to, 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 um, to describe all the elements of the SciGay open access platform now, but uh, I want to show you that the open access repository is one of the key elements. And actually already in 2017, when we run the first uh, e-research hack fest in Addis Ababa, uh, there was the first implementation of an open access uh, repository. And uh, this was actually the first one, the NADRE, the NADRE repository is an evolution of the one which has been created already um, one year, almost two years ago. Um, you know, I, wanna sh I wanna underline here that uh, this repository and the NADRE repository have a DOI prefix. I was mentioning DOIs before, so all the records on the NADRE repository can be tagged with the DOIs. And then you can, you can uh, make, a DOI, ma make your publication, your data searchable, discoverable, and more visible. And actually, the data site DOI prefix for Ethiopia was requested by the minister, and it was released by the president of the Conference of Rectors of Italian Universities. There was an agreement between the Minister of Education in Ethiopia and the president of the Conference of the Rectors because the CU, CRUI, CRUI, is the member in Italy, Italian member of DataSite. And DataSite is an international uh, initiative to release DOIs to data, to software, to documents. So where we am to, uh, using linked data and uh, analyzing linked data, you can uh, create this kind of uh, knowledge workflow. So what we want to do is that the researchers or citizen science can search using keywords belonging to their disciplines. They can discover data and publications, all the needed to run experiments, to run simulations, to produce new results, to write new papers, to assign papers, to, DO, to assign DOIs to papers, and to publish these papers on open access repository and extend the knowledge about a given subject. And from the knowledge flow, workflow, you can create what I call the knowledge nexi to enable a knowledge society. So for one, you can navigate the knowledge. So one paper, you can discover all the semantic web links to other papers, to other data sets, and then you can discover new knowledge and uh, you can uh, uh, connect a, a different, uh, different kind of uh, scientific results, different kind of science from very simple things to very complicated things. Of course, this is a pictorial view run by humans using uh, computer code software. You can analyze you, a huge uh, uh, size of data and you can discover new knowledge across a huge size of data. So with NADRE, uh, we want to use the same standards I mentioned we want to create the same services and we want to provide all Ethiopian researchers with the possibility to, from one side to share their scientific results and from the other side to be able to access uh, 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 results from other people so that uh, new kind of problems can be tackled and new societal challenges can be, can be actually solved. 